Welcome back everybody, my name is Tucker and in today's video, I kinda wanna talk about the direction of the San Antonio Spurs. Uh, where is this team going? What are they planning on doing in the future? Because I've seen some people talk positively recently about the situation that the Spurs are in and that they put themselves in. And I'm not saying that that's not true, I'm just saying let's look at this as a whole. Let's evaluate what the potential plan could be moving forward for San Antonio. That's what we're gonna be talking about in today's video. But quickly, before we get started, if you enjoy content like this, then consider subscribing. You can also leave a like rating, helps me out a ton, lets me know that you're enjoying the content, and you can check me out at various socials at the bottom of the screen as well. With those things said, the San Antonio Spurs. So, the positive things that I've seen people talking about on Twitter or otherwise for San Antonio are that they do have significant cap space in the summer 2021. It's been a while since that since that has been the case, but they do have that going for them. Uh, they've got a handful of young players in this roster that range from they're kind of taking a flyer on them to they're actually legitimately interesting as possible really good players moving forward. And then, of course, you've still got the organizational benefit of the San Antonio Spurs, of, of a proven winning culture, proven front office, proven coaching staff. Even though a lot of people that have been a big part of the success over the years have now moved on to different teams and different positions, it's still the Spurs and it's still something that has to be accounted for that that would be a huge positive for them. So let's talk first about what they've got going for them in the short, in the short term and we'll kind of talk about the long term. Then. So in the short term, some things to think about here are the fact that DeMar DeRozan and LaMarcus Aldridge are both 2021 free agents. That's the that's where the majority of their cap space is coming from this offseason. Then obviously they kind of have to figure out what they do or don't want to do with those two players in the summer of 2021. And you also don't really know what the future of the head coaching position is either. Is Greg Popovich going to want to continue to coach? At what point will he not want to continue to coach? How does that affect where the roster is going to go moving forward? Because presumably, as long as Popovich wants to coach, they're going to allow him to, and they're not going to go into a quote unquote rebuild as long as Popovich is the coach. Now even though I think that at some point within the next few years, Popovich is going to retire, whoever they replace him with, I'm sure will be a quality head coach. I don't have any doubt about the fact that they'll have a replacement in mind that will do a good job, but it's still something to keep in mind, most notably as it relates to how they are constructing the roster and kind of their future plans. So in the long term, they really only have a few longer contracts on this roster right now, on this payroll, the first being DeJounte Murray. Uh, Yaka Pertle just signed a new deal. Then other than that, they've got a couple of rookie deals, but not anything huge, like I said, because Aldridge and DeRozan uh, are expiring contracts for 2021. Um, and there is some young talent here, but they need to kind of start picking and choosing who they are or aren't going to keep and who they are or aren't going to build around. They've already given out money to Murray. Hopefully he starts to live up to that contract at some point here relatively soon. Certainly has defensive potential, but you know, coming off of the injury that he did, it, it was it made sense that it would be a bit of a slow return for him, but hopefully he can, you know, become the player that they thought that he would be when they signed him to that contract. Uh, Derek White is going to be a 2021 restricted free agent, and then Lonnie Walker will be one the year after that. And then there's some other young players as well in this roster that they just kind of need to evaluate and figure out who is and is not a foundational part of this team and who they do or do not want to build around. It's a really important question to answer for every team, but for San Antonio specifically, because they have so many of these young perimeter players that it's a little bit unclear, you know, who the best ones to build around moving forward are gonna be. Um, now, I will say that if you're looking at positives in the short term and the long term for this group, there's plenty of versatility here. There's plenty of options, which is a huge, huge benefit. And one of the things that I advocate for most when you're looking at how to build your team from a year to year basis in the NBA. So they can go in a variety of different directions here, whether that be with their cap space, with tradable assets, with their coaching staff, whatever it may be. And you always want to have multiple options. You never want to just be focusing on one thing. And so that's a huge positive for them as we're looking at kind of what they're doing here moving forward. And in my opinion, there's a couple of ways that this will probably go for the Spurs as they try and construct this roster and kind of extend this era of success that they've had, even though it's taken a bit of a dip lately. They are either going to start this year and be pretty decent and have a chance at the playoffs. And if that's the case, they're going to go for it. That's just who they are. They If, if they see you know, the light at the end of the tunnel that is a playoff appearance this season, even in a very tough Western Conference. They're going to keep guys like DeRozan and Aldridge on the roster. They might even make a move to potentially help themselves get into the postseason. They're going to prioritize playing their veterans over the younger guys, and they're going to do everything they can to get to the playoffs. That's just that's just what the Spurs do, right? They're not going <clears> to, <throat> you know, if there starts to be some hope, they're not going to start trading guys away and, and, you know, start tanking towards the bottom of the lottery, right? That's just how things are done. Now, 
If that's not the case, I could envision a potential scenario in which DeMar DeRozan and or LaMarcus Aldridge both get traded during this upcoming season. Now, it's a bit of an awkward situation because again, you don't really know what Popovich does or doesn't want to do. And in a scenario in which you're trading away both of those guys or one of those guys, the plan is either to use those bigger salaries to bring in a player that wants to be in San Antonio that can be really good for you, or to trade them away for younger assets, keeping that cap space open in the summer of 2021, and then building a good team with that cap space so Popovich stays on, or trading away those two guys signals kind of the end of the Popovich era, and then he retires at the end of the season, and then maybe you go into a bit more of a, of a rebuilding project with these younger players and this cap space. So that's what I mean when I say at least they have that versatility, but it's unclear what direction they're trying to go in here or really what the best option would be. So in a potential Aldridge to DeRozan trade, they likely wouldn't get a ton in return for either of these players, considering the fact that they're 2021 free agents, considering the fact that they are getting a bit older, but getting some kind of value, in my opinion, would be preferable. Uh, if we're just, you know, talking about what I would do, either of those guys would have been traded already, honestly, if it was up to me. Um, and then that kind of really allows you to evaluate the younger players on the roster, giving Derek White, Lonnie Walker, all these other guys, as many minutes as you can to kind of see what they have to offer, see what they can do for your team, and then base your extension and your re-signing decisions around what they do or don't show you. And, you know, again, trading away Aldridge to DeRozan kind of would have, would have been a priority to allow that to happen before this point. If that's the case and they want to go in a direction that allows for a rebuild, they're in a really good position to do some awesome things moving forward. Even with the, the Murray contract that you know could end up being a bit of an issue for them moving forward, depending on how he plays, it's still San Antonio. It's still a group that really knows what they're doing. And having you know these kinds of assets that they haven't had a ton of in the past, cap spacing young players could allow them to really flex their muscles at the front office and build something pretty special there in San Antonio, assuming some of their younger players develop. They have the opportunity to go get stars if they really, you know, want to acquire them with their cap space or otherwise, or just focus on building around the young guys. I think there's a possibility for a bright future here in San Antonio. Uh, whether that involves Craig Popovich or whether that's going to happen relatively soon, I have no idea. But at least there are options here. At least there's versatility. At least there's flexibility and what they can potentially do here moving forward. And so basically the answer to my question at the beginning of this video is like, you know, what is San Antonio doing? Well, it all kind of depends on their performance this season, right? If they put themselves in position to potentially make the playoffs and that's what this front office is gonna do, that's what they're gonna push towards. And that's gonna dictate what they do. They're gonna keep LaMarcus Aldridge and DeMar DeRozan, and then they're gonna try and make the playoffs and figure it out afterwards, right? And then just do what they can in 2021. Maybe they re-sign Aldridge and DeRozan. Maybe they go out and get some other players. Maybe they focus on the younger guys. I don't know. But we'll know at some point during the season what the plan is. And it's just gonna be entirely based on how good they are. If they're not any good, if they're near the bottom of the Western Conference, then that could finally be the kind of start of a new era in San Antonio that we've been anticipating here for a little bit, whether that be with or without Popovich. But from a roster standpoint, they might finally move on from this Aldridge, DeRozan, and other guys, you know, kind of plan that they've had for the last handful of years. So it's going to be interesting to see what exactly San Antonio does. They're kind of a forgotten team at this point. They're always kind of looming because they're the Spurs. But in terms of the interest level that people have and what they're doing. Uh, it's definitely decreased and, uh, you know, for years and years and years, people are going to talk about how they didn't handle the Kawhi Leonard situation properly. But regardless, I think there is an opportunity here for them to do some positive things. I just, I I'm hoping for a bit of direction this year. I'm hoping for a bit more understanding of what exactly they want to do with this roster. And I think we'll probably get that this upcoming season. And then we'll finally understand what exactly the San Antonio Spurs are looking to do. But that is gonna be the end of today's video and I thank you all very much for watching. Once again, my name is Tucker. If you missed any of my previous videos, then be sure to check out the boxes on screen. Be sure to let me know down in the comment section below what you guys think San Antonio could potentially be doing moving forward or what you think they should do here moving forward. Hope you guys have an awesome rest of your day and I will see you all next time.